Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everyone. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me again on the Word Podcast. Uh, We're examining John 5 right now, and we're in the midst of... uh, a declaration that Jesus is making. And I think it's important to understand that a lot of times we read these things and you read the red letters and it's wonderful. And we read it sort of in a quiet, soft kind of way, you know, in, in a church gathering, Sunday school class, perhaps in a quiet corner in the home while we're reading the scripture or something like that. And we sort of miss the context that Jesus was out among the populace. He was out among the people. And he's questioned about these things and the religious rulers are coming at him and it's they're argumentative. And it is expressive and it's loud. Jesus would have been saying this out loud. He, and as a matter of fact, you can find some varied, uh, uh, different interpretations of these kind of things. There's actually a good movie out uh, called the, uh, uh, I think it's called the Gospel of John. The (laughs) creative name, right? The Gospel of John, and it's actually very good. I think it's on uh, Amazon Video, maybe on Netflix, something like that. Amazon Prime Video. And all it is is uh, a movie, and it's very it's very well acted. I mean, it's a real movie, <laughs> but the dialogue is strictly the Gospel of John. And that's one of the newer translations, one of the more colloquial translations for the English audience type of thing. But it follows exactly what is said. But you get to see the emotions, and so the actor does an excellent job, particularly on this passage right here, and several others, where Jesus is proclaiming this stuff. Like the last verse we looked at in John 5, verse 36, you know, I can read it and say, but the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. You know, Jesus is saying this where people can hear it for a long distance. He isn't standing up preaching, you know, with an audience, but the people are all about as an audience. So he would have been going, but the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I'm doing, These bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. So it would have been very expressive, folks, very expressive. And I think we do well to uh, read these passages with that understanding and and really try to superimpose that on top of it because it was a very intense emotional thing that the Lord was sharing here. So verse 37, he continues, And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you have never heard. His form you have never seen. And you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one whom he has sent. Boy, Jesus is just laying it down before them. He's throwing it down before them. And he's speaking specifically to the religious people, Okay, the ones that are questioning, the ones that are wanting to kill him. Remember, we've already seen that. That's their desire now, is to kill him. That's what they're wanting to do. And so he's telling me, he says, you know what? The Father is the one who bears witness of me. He's the one who's seen me. And then he declares to them, you've never heard his voice. You've never seen his form. Now, they would probably agree to that, that no, we haven't seen the form of God. The voice, I don't know. Jesus is talking about his audible voice. Okay, Some of them might have claimed that they had heard his audible voice, but most probably would not. They would have said that they would have heard his voice through the word, no doubt. Okay, but he said, no, no, you haven't seen, heard his voice. You haven't seen his form. The unwritten thing here is that Jesus is saying, I have because I've been sent for him, sent by him. But then verse 38, you do not have his word abiding in you for you do not believe the one whom he has sent. Boy, this right here, you talk about just making them rage because these religious rulers, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Essenes that were lived outside of town and probably were not around at this moment, but may have been, uh, they knew the Word of God, the Old Testament. They knew this Word. Like, like There's no way we would know it. They had it memorized, many, the whole total of it. I mean, it's just amazing how much they memorized. But let me tell you what. There's a difference between knowing and knowing. And this is what Jesus is showing to them. And this is what they're clarifying, what he's clarifying. And let me tell you what, folks, we see it today. Quite often people will get up and boy, they'll sound wonderful and they'll teach the word of God and it will be truth. 
and yet they themselves have not done what Jesus said right here. He says, you do not have the word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one whom he has sent. They did not believe that Jesus was the one that was sent. It's more common than we want to believe are the people who will teach and preach the word of God, but who have truly not believed. Well, how can you know if they truly not believe? Well, other parts of the scripture say you will know them by their fruit. Okay, you'll know them by their fruit. Many are the people who sound so good and they look so good and they actually act good, okay? But when you get underneath that, you find out that they're just whitewashed sepulchers, okay? That they have not truly believed. They haven't believed unto salvation. I was just talking to my son-in-law while I go about this uh, in relationship with something that's happening in their church. And it's a good thing, a very good thing. Uh, quite often when you're talking with people, they will say, oh, yeah, I believe. I believe that God is God. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah, I believe. But see, you can believe that, but it not being a belief unto salvation, a belief unto righteousness. Because a belief unto righteousness and salvation is that you believe and then you repent and you confess and say, Lord, because of who you are and I believe who you are and I believe what you've done for me, will you please change me? And then there's a life that is transformed out of that. These folks didn't have that. And Jesus just tells them, you don't have the word abiding in you because you do not believe me. Now watch this. This verse right here, verse 39 and 40, it's one sentence. Jesus says this to him. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. My, Jesus is just telling them the truth, folks. He's telling them the absolute truth of what their status was, of what has happened within their faith and their belief. And I tell you what, the same thing has happened to us. Okay, Many are the people that sit in church and they listen and they may even search the scripture. They'll flip through and read a Bible verse here and a Bible verse there. And they'll sit in Sunday school class, they'll sit in Bible studies, and they search the scriptures because they think in the scriptures are eternal life. And they totally miss the point that eternal life lies in God, lies in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done at the behest of the Father to reconcile mankind to Father. And he's telling them the scriptures that you're looking for and that you're looking eternal life for in those scriptures are what bear witness about me. The scriptures bear witness about me, and yet, listen to this, you refuse to come to me. That's got some interesting connotations in my mind, that refusing to come. Refusing has the idea that you're not doing it even though you know it's the truth. Even though I know that something may be right, even though I know that this may, may need to be done, it's not that you're doing it out of ignorance. Refusing means that you know and you still do not do it. So verse 40 says, yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. Jesus is saying this, the scriptures tell you how to have eternal life. That's absolutely true. And the scriptures bear witness of me. And I am the means by which you have eternal life. Let me tell you, if you have not come to the Lord, if you have not come to the Lord as your source of eternal life, you're not truly saved. You may be a great Bible teacher. You may be a pastor of a church. I think I know some preachers uh, that are not saved. <laughs> Seriously, the fruit of their life just reveals just the, I mean, they're nice, they're sweet, everybody loves them to death and all this kind of stuff, but it is just a well-executed thing of the flesh, and they haven't really been transformed. That's what Jesus was saying to them, saying to them, I don't abide in you. You don't have eternal life. You're searching the scriptures for that eternal life, but that scripture bear witnesses about bears witness of me, and you refuse to come to me. Don't refuse to come to him. Today's the day of salvation. Repent, confess, call upon him, and say, Lord, forgive me, and watch what he does. Again, I'm Dale. Thank you so much for hanging around with me here, and I'll see you again next time.